evening everybody. Tonight's video we're going to uh, showcase the uh, ATR5. The ATR5 is a transceiver made for the Royal Canadian Air Force back uh, during the war, Second World War. This particular version made in 1943. Uh, it was used in fighter aircraft. Not entirely sure what kind of fighter aircraft it was used in, but uh, it uh, I don't think they made a whole lot of them. Uh, they don't turn up very often. Anyway, this particular one is uh, currently have it on. I'm going to shut it off so we don't have to listen to that for a few minutes. Uh, so generally, uh, we'll run across the controls here on the top of the uh, unit. So we have uh, the uh, start-stop switch, which is the uh, turns the dynamotor on and off. Uh, we have a transmit, receive, and intercom control, volume control, uh, fine tune control for the receiver, and the band switch for the two bands. The two band radio has a, um, well, they're separated by uh, yellow and green, is the for some reason. Um, we have the uh, the two uh, controls for the uh, receiver tuning controls. Uh, these little uh, knobs below that, right, those little silver knobs, these guys right here, those are to lock the controls after they've been set, so so nothing moves when you're flying. <coughs> Moving along, over here is the uh, the uh, meter uh, with its uh, switches. We have the PA tune controls. To, there's a pair of those. And then we have the... Uh, the the uh, antenna matching uh, device. This is uh, usually contained behind that door, behind this little little cover. I took it off for this video so we could look at it. But uh, anyway, there's the uh, there's some capacitors in there. There's also uh, what looks like a roller inductor, but actually how you tune that is you pick those little uh, the little uh, these little discs. You have to actually physically move them around to find the best match. <coughs> so. Kind of a neat, uh, neat setup. We have uh, the antenna connection, which is a post. Uh, moving down, we have the uh, power and microphone and remote control box connections. And then finally, we have uh, the local remote switch and the uh, crystal tune switch. So the crystal tune switch is for the uh, is essentially for the uh, uh, each. Uh, channel of the transmitter you can to peak the uh, to peak the crystal uh, up when you uh, when you go uh, install them and then next door to that we have the crystal heater so the crystal heater is uh, is uh, not used in this case I don't have uh, the actual crystal the heat the crystals with the heaters in them so uh, moving right along we'll get up here we'll have a look inside the uh, the transceiver. Now this is an AM only transceiver. So over here we have a pair of uh, 6L6 modulator tubes. Uh, next door to that, this fellow right down there is the uh, the actual motor that does the band switching. When you flip the switch on the front of the radio it uh, drives that little motor and the little motor drives a sprocket and gear and it uh, in turn pushes a, a rod which uh, which uh, essentially activates a bunch of rotary switches and changes your uh, changes channels for you. We have a pair of uh, of uh, PA tuning uh, capacitors there for the uh, 807. We have the uh, single 6L6 for the oscillator and then moving over here we have the receiver section with a pair of uh, tuning capacitors for each each receiver. So, and of course the dynamotor in the back. Uh, it runs on 12 volts. It draws uh, a bit of juice when it first turns on, but once it's running, uh, she's uh, I think it settles back to three or four amps, something like that. The whole unit puts out about 15 watts AM, and the handset is. Uh, this is not the original handset. It would have had a, a, probably a, a headset or some sort of uh, 
uh, flight helmet uh, affair. So some, the previous uh, people who had this, they geared up this telephone handset, which is a carbon uh, microphone handset and receiver. And it uh, works quite well, actually. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. We have the uh, IFR uh, flashed up down here. So currently tuned on uh, 3705. So we'll just kick her on here. So I'll just show you. So essentially, this is a uh, pretty simple straight up thing. You just kick her over to transmit. We're now transmitting down here on the IFR. Testing one, two. Not too bad audio for the uh, carbon mic that it has. But, uh, you know, it's definitely, it's got that carbon microphone sound. So people uh, totally recognize that. Anyway, that uh, pretty much does it for our little video here this evening. Thanks for watching, and we'll try to uh, find something, uh, something interesting, another interesting project down the road. So until then, have a great evening.